So at this point, I would like to, to introduce uh, Matt Hansen. Some of you may recall, who, maybe if you came over to the, uh, the Americas member meeting, uh, Matt Hansen joined us on a ROS2 panel in Chicago. Uh, Intel is now uh, one of our newer members, so welcome, Intel. And uh, Matt Hansen is a senior software architect um, at Intel, and he's been leading a Navigation2 working group uh, to bring uh, new navigation capabilities to ROS2. Uh, Matt Hansen, are, are you? Um, I can stop sharing and you can take control. Is that okay? Yes, please. All right. You should be able to uh, hit the share button at the bottom of the view. <clears throat> okay, I'm doing it. It's taking a second. And there we go. Sorry. I'll go back to my title slide. See if I can go into presentation mode. Can you see that? Okay. Looks great on this side. Okay. Yeah, um, so Matt asked me to give an overview of Navigation 2. And for those of you that are going to be at Roscon, uh, there's, uh, this is kind of a subset of the, um, my Roscon presentation I'll be giving at the end of October. Um, so I'll jump right into it. I think I'm limited on time here. So um, I, I want to give a quick plug for who we are. Uh, we are Intel Open Source Robotics, and uh, as you know, Intel, we are a technology company, and you know, we have technologies in virtualization, security, AI, uh, machine vision, and of course, you know, compute power. And uh, so our goal in open source robotics is to basically enable those technology pillars into uh, robotics applications through ROS2 and uh, basically provide uh, easy platform for people to innovate. Um, so navigation, if you, you know, have some familiarity with ROS, you probably already know it's one of the most used packages in ROS. Um, it provides autonomous movement for a robot in a 2D uh, map. Um, on the right here, you can see a screenshot of a uh, 3D gazebo world. Um, this is a TurtleBot 3 world, um, and then the on the right side of that screen is the um, the 2D cost map representation of that 3D world. Um, but basically, given a, a current pose and a goal pose, the robot uh, will autonomously drive itself to the goal. Um, this, this package, navigation, you know, is seen as one of the keys to accelerating ROS2 development and adoption across the community and, and industry. Um, and as of a year and a half ago, um, it was, uh, kind of in the to-do um, pile for uh, backlog, I should say, for, for ROS2, but no one had committed to porting it. And uh, so we, you know, had some discussions with OSRF and uh, some of the maintainers of the you know, uh, original navigation stack and, and uh, you know, no, no one really had the bandwidth to do it. And they supported uh, us, you know, kind of taking ownership of that. Um, so we we did we took ownership of that and we began porting that um, last summer summer of 18. Um, we ported it, refactored it, and made um, some architectural improvements, and that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, one more little bit of background on this before we began, I posted a discourse topic um, to gather some input from the Ross community. I, I wanted to know what you know, improvements people wanted to see in ROS2 versus ROS1 navigation. And, you know, got quite a few responses, but the, the you know, kind of summary of what I, I, I gathered from that was, you know, people wanted more uh, customizability. Um, one of the problems with ROS1 navigation um, was, you know, it wasn't as customizable as people wanted. And so they were having to fork the code to make the tweaks they wanted. and uh, it, you know, basically led to a whole bunch of forks of, of navigation. Um, they wanted more modularity, um, you know, more ability to be able to easily replace the planners and control algorithms, uh, more extensibility, ability um, to use Python, for example, for uh, planners and control. Um, and then in addition, our team, we wanted to um, basically, you know, boost the reliability, the quality and the maintainability and, and you know, overall um, 
these software engineering best practices and, and try to make it a, uh, a robust software stack. And so the Navigation 2 project is, is our, our attempt to meet all of these goals. So as I mentioned, you know, the, uh, the high level goals were extensibility, flexibility, modularization, and reliability. And the way we set about to meet some of those goals were by um, integrating behavior trees instead of move base, which I will talk about, um, moving the planners to be ROS2 action based, uh, which allows you to write them in other languages, um, same with the recovery behaviors. So pulling those out is as something that can be called through an action. Um, and uh, moving things to moving the existing nodes to be lifecycle nodes so that they can be uh, controlled more systematically. Now I'm going to try to run this video and let's see if this works. I may need to change my sharing. Can you guys see my my screen? Or do I need to change the sharing setting? I can see the screen, but it doesn't look like the video is moving yet. <clears throat> okay, all right. Well, that's because I haven't started it yet, but I want to make oh, sure okay. first you can at least see it. See it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this is this is just a short demo video um, of Navigation Two that we shot um, on on dashing um, over the summer here. Couple different camera angles, obviously, and then the the view you see on the right is the Arviz view um, of the robot moving uh, in the, the cost map. Okay, so Matt, I mean, are you? I, I see the obviously the I guess it's a screenshot in your. I'm still seeing your PowerPoint presentation slide. Oh, okay, you're not seeing the video. That's what I was afraid. Yeah, if you shared PowerPoint as opposed to sharing your screen, it'll stick to the PowerPoint. <clears throat> All right, let me go here there we go it's showing now all right i'll i'll restart it it's very replay so if you guys have seen ross one navigation before this is probably not that uh exciting to you but it um was you know, this was done using the ROS2 Debian packages in dashing. Uh, and so the point of this is basically to show you that uh, at this point, we believe we have full uh, capability equal to what was in ROS2. So with, some, with the architecture. All right, I'll go back to my slides. So if you're familiar with ROS1, this picture on the right should look familiar. This comes from the uh, ROS navigation tutorials. And you can see this big box in the center is called move base. And within it was um, the global planner, the local planner, recovery behaviors, um, and the cost maps. And then these external nodes like AMCL, map server, et cetera. Um, so, we basically ported map server and AMCL pretty directly. They, we did some refactoring and, and code cleanup and tried to make them uh, more maintainable. We also added uh, some more tests. Uh, move base, however, this is the big thing. Uh, we basically replaced move base. There is no move base in ROS2 navigation. Um, we replaced it with a behavior tree engine. Um, called BT Navigator, and I'll get into more detail on that. Um, we also have pulled recovery behaviors out and made those basically uh, behind actions that you can call from the behavior tree. Um, similarly, we've now put uh, the, the planners behind action servers. So there's a planner server and a controller server. Um, and then the, the global planner and local planner, we, we ported the NavFM um, planner from ROS1, and we ported the DWB local planner from the robot navigation package, which is, if you're familiar, uh, it's Locus Robotics, David Liu's um, uh, spiritual successor to the DWA planner uh, that was in ROS1. 
and then uh, local cost maps and global cost maps. Those were those were ported fairly directly, and they're now contained within the within the planners. Um, this slide gives you kind of the new view of the system. Uh, so as you can see, move base is gone. Uh, now there is an action interface to the BT navigator, and that uh, uses a behavior tree to control the, the logic flow, and I'll talk about that on the next slide. Um, and then from that, uh, the default tree calls an action called compute path to pose, which uh, is, there's a planner server for that. And as I mentioned, the NavFN planner is a plugin that you can uh, you know, replace um, with a different planner if you like. Uh, that you know basically computes that path and re returns the path and then uh, the follow path uh, action calls into the controller server and the uh, DWB planner is the one that that actually drives the robot and that outputs a command velocity to the base control. So quick word on behavior trees if you haven't heard of those before they're similar to state machines, but they're hierarchical in nature. So um, basically you start at the root node and you go down and to the left until you hit uh, an endpoint and then you traverse back up and to the right. Uh, so, and there's different types of nodes. So a sequence node is a purely do the left, then, then do the right uh, type of a thing. And they, there's a true false a return from each one of these. So you go like uh, retry until successful. Is this clear? Uh, if not, then read the documentation. Uh, if it's still not clear, then keep retrying until it's clear, at which point you can build awesome robots. So that's the example from their website. This is how it ends up being implemented in Navigation 2. So one of the nice things about behavior trees is that it's uh, XML based. So you can change it without having to rebuild the software. It's uh, the, the BT navigator itself is written in C++, but it loads the behavior tree, which is in XML. So you can quickly customize your XML and um, change and add things or move things around in sequence um, fairly easily. Now there is a caveat there. Uh, if you add something new, like you want to call into a new ROS2 action that you've never used before, you do have to write a, uh, a small C++ plugin basically for the, uh, for the behavior tree itself to be able to know how to call that action. But the configuration of, of existing actions is, is, is very easy through the XML. And this on the right shows you uh, kind of the high level Im implementation of, of what this this particular behavior tree on the left in XML looks like. So uh, on this left side here is where the compute path is. Okay, this is the compute path to pose, and this is being run at one hertz. In this case, we're basically running the uh, the path computation in parallel to the follow path. Um, this happens, so every every second it replans and finds, you know, looks for a new optimal path to the goal, and then um, uh, it forwards that along to the, you know, the follow path logic, and basically it, it, uh, this is what drives a robot. If these should fail, then it falls back over to this recovery uh, branch of the tree, where it does the recovery behaviors. And right now we're doing like clear the global cost map, clear the local cost map and, and spin 180 degrees. And then it will retry, it will recompute a new path and attempt to you know, follow that path, et cetera. So this shows you kind of that, that other view uh, the top level view, but now with the recovery behaviors added, and I, I had to kind of add those off to the side here, but you get the idea. So that 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 behavior tree I just showed you is all basically inside this this BT Navigator node, and its uh, actions are to call the planner server, call the controller server, or if things fail, to call these uh, 
you know, called a spin action or these other services. Um, the other, one of the other major changes we made for ROS2 was we moved all the nodes from uh, traditional ROS1 like nodes to ROS2 lifecycle nodes. And uh, lifecycle nodes basically have an integrated state machine in the base class. So uh, if you look at this diagram over here, the, the main states are unconfigured. That's when it first is, when a node is first created, it goes into the unconfigured state. Then you can make a service call into this change state service and, and you can walk it through the state machine to uh, the inactive state or configured and then you can uh, walk it into the active state. And this, at this point, it's doing real work. Um, the idea here is that you can basically control the bring up of your nodes and when um, the memory gets allocated for different types of data structures you have and also um, control like, when the parameters get read. So uh, you can have much finer granularity control of what happens when. <clears throat> so we've moved our, uh, our, all of our nodes to being lifecycle nodes now. And in order to control that, we added a new node called the lifecycle manager. Um, and it basically provides a macro service for controlling the, um, the startup and shutdown of the other nodes in the system. And uh, if you, and we also added a convenience function called auto start, where it will basically sequence through them automatically, so you don't have to do anything uh, manually. But it it provides a a service here called manage lifecycle nodes, which you can tell it, you know, I want to start up, I want to shut down, I want to pause, resume, or reset. And then uh, uh, at, at load time, you also uh, give it a node list, so it knows what nodes in the system you want it to control. And if you want it to auto start, then you uh, set the auto start parameter to true and it will just bring everything up to the active state automatically for you. Uh, one other addition that we've made in ROS2 is we've added a nav to bring up package, which um, is, you know, in ROS1, bring up packages are common. Uh, allow you to easily launch the system and and uh, and use it. So we've we've added one, and uh, as you can see, there's this you know, gives an, some examples here of how to launch the system. You can see it's in this case it's setting auto start equals to true. Um, if you want to try to use navigation two, go to our nav two bring up package readme, and uh, that get kind of walks you through the the first uh, bring up step. So uh, in summary, you know, ROS2 has gained a lot of functionality in the last year. Uh, the dashing release that came out in May is the first LTS. We released our, our Navigation 2 um, for dashing um, in early August. Uh, and that, as I mentioned before, you know, uses behavior trees, lifecycle nodes, and provides bring up launch files for easy use. We have a big backlog of future, future plans, but um, right now we're working on adding multi-robot support. So you can have multiple robots uh, in the same, uh, you know, on the same network or in the same simulation, for example. Um, we're planning on releasing that as part of Eloquent. Uh, and we have work underway in, you know, improving system performance. And uh, we're trying to build more community involvement and, expertise, obviously. So wrapping up, I just want to make sure to acknowledge the team. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's quite a few of us who've been working on this, um, many of, most of which are at Intel. Uh, Steve Masinski, he's with um, Samsung. And I want to give some thanks to some of our partner groups too, like Robotis, Rover Robotics, NG, and OSRF. And if you're coming to Roscon, uh, you can see our demo with uh, with UNG, where they're running uh, ROS2 on our robot, on their robot, I'm sorry. 
And if you're interested in getting involved, we have a navigation to working group Thursdays at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, you can contact me and I can invite you to the meeting. And that's it. Any questions? And so Matt, I guess like, you know, this is a, a pretty big deliverable um, that, you've, that you've taken on the working group is supporting. Uh, is there, what's the intent, like say like, after you have something, you know, hey, NAV2 for ROS2 is here, what is the support strategy, like resolving issues? I mean, is, is your team going to be committed at least for near term to do some working issues and reviewing pull requests kind of? Oh, yeah, we, we are. We have been for, yeah, I mean, ever, ever since last year. Uh, yeah, there's, we're getting issues submitted all the time to our repo and, and uh, getting some community contributions. Those are really starting to, to ramp up. And, uh, Good. So, yes, at, at least for the foreseeable future, we plan to continue to do that, although we do want more uh, community involvement so that not all of that uh, load falls on our shoulders. Great. Uh, I, I have a question from the chat, chat room. It says, the NAV2 architecture reminds of us of the work done in move base flex. Was there any interaction with the developers of that project? Uh, not a lot, no. I mean, we, we reviewed what they did and um, while we thought it was, you know, it was good work, um, we thought that, you know, integrating the behavior tree, for example, and moving to lifecycle nodes, um, that wasn't really part of move base flex. And so we, we didn't, we didn't leverage their work. Great. Well, we're seeing the emergence of uh, behavior trees and in, in, in path planning as well, right? So this is definitely a, an emerging trend in, in, in ROS capability, right? So. Yeah. And one thing I should mention is the, the BT Navigator node is, since it's a node, it's replaceable too. If someone wanted to, they could replace that with a different state machine or with purely custom logic because the, the um, action interfaces are, you know, as long as it output the same actions, the uh, compute path to pose and the follow path actions, um, you can, you can re even replace that. So pretty much anything in the stack at this point is, it can be replaced if desired. 